People have argued about the proper interpretation of the U.S. Constitution from the moment that brilliant document was ratified in 1783. But I suspect you've noticed, like I have, that a lot of the time the three branches of government, President, Congress, the courts, act like the Constitution's a document that serves simply as a guide or instruction manual that they can follow when they feel like it. But it's much, much more than that. It's the law of the land. But this idea seems to be debatable to our friends we call progressives. Those are the people who used to call themselves liberals until that term started carrying too much baggage. Now, these progressives believe in a so-called living constitution, one that can be changed according to the preferences of each generation. We would refer you, and more importantly them, to Article 5 of the Constitution, which outlines the only legal way to change or amend the Constitution. Now, Article 5 requires overwhelming majorities in both the federal and state legislatures to amend the Constitution. Of course, this means the founders clearly intended that changes to the law of the land require widespread approval by both the people and the legislatures. Why? because requiring any less would be to elevate the desires of any single generation to the level of tyranny. Because the founders deliberately made it difficult, the Constitution's been amended just 17 times since the Bill of Rights was passed in 1789. But you may have noticed that these days politicians amend the Constitution in effect by simply pretending it doesn't exist, or they embrace the parts they like and ignore the parts they dislike. Perhaps the worst constitutional abuses have been in two areas in particular, the discovery of previously undiscovered rights by the judicial branch, the courts, and flagrant abuse of the Commerce Clause by the legislative branch, the Congress. Now, when it comes to the discovery of new rights by the Supreme Court, nothing can match Roe v. Wade, which made abortion legal all over the nation. Now, no matter what you think on the issue of abortion, and the unborn, this is bad law. Why? Well, let's talk about a word that you may have heard of in passing, but that I think is pretty important. It's called penumbra. You may not know what it is, but you should. Roe versus Wade was based on the Supreme Court's discovery, after almost 200 years, that the Constitution contain, contains a penumbra of rights that aren't actually written anywhere, but according to them are implied. Now, the word penumbra means a shadowy, indefinite, or marginal area of the law, apparently one that us regular people can't see, but many of the Supreme Court justices could. This penumbra, and others like it, threw open the law of the land to the most outlandish extension or invention of constitutional rights. And just as important, it removed the issue of abortion rights from being decided the way the Constitution says it should be decided, by individual states, each individual state. The Tenth Amendment, which says all powers not specifically delegated to the federal government, and there, there are many less than you'd think, they're reserved for the states to decide. Now, to fight this kind of judicial abuse, we need to bone up on the Constitution, which many people are doing these days. Here's a good start. Read Article 1, Section 8, on the limited powers that are given to the federal government. Read Article 5, on how the Constitution can be amended. And then read the Tenth Amendment in the Bill of Rights on the powers given to the states. Now, in Part 2 of Law of the Land, we'll talk about how congressional abuse of the Commerce Clause has and will threaten to wreak havoc just the way the judicial activism we've just discussed has done and bring us one generation away from either a full-blown European-style nanny state that obeys the Constitution only when it feels like it or a genuine rebirth of freedom.